So awesome. yeah, yeah, good month. Good, good month. month yeah, I'm Great very month. proud of my reading. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Book Brood, and we are going to be doing our June wrap up today. June. Yep. Halfway through the year. Heck yeah. Exciting. My June wrap-up is going to be way more exciting. How'd it go? It, I, I read 14 things. Awesome. Last month I read three things. That's right. Just a yeah. lot of uh, Abigail Rue, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm not saying there's <laughs> not a lot of Abigail Rue in here in this wrap-up, but there's also a lot of other things. There's a lot more and Abigail Rue. <laughs> a lot more. Yes, there is. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you mind if I start it off? Go for it. All right. The first thing I read this month, I don't have with me, but it's Knights of Sidonia, Volume 9. Uh, this is by... I'll put it here. I, can't... I gave that five stars because I love that series. It's about mechs and aliens and space travel, all that stuff. So awesome things that I'm just automatically into. It's great. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The first thing I read was I actually finished up an audiobook that I was in the middle of on our last wrap up mm-hmm. and that was The Forest of Hands and Teeth by Carrie Ryan and I really enjoyed this this is actually a book one in a trilogy I was planning on reading the other ones but it turns out that they're just companion novels oh, okay. not a continuation of the same characters so I'm less excited about that uh, but I gave it four stars it is about a uh, post-civilization society something happens and then this group uh, has to isolate themselves and they turn super religious and they control everything in the population mm-hmm. you know everyone um, is expected to get married at a certain time and pop out as many babies as possible um, and then you find out it's because there are zombies almost the entire world's population has been turned into zombies and so they've got huge fences and uh-huh. anyways, it turns out okay. to be like an escape story. Oh, okay. And I really enjoyed it. Good. Yeah. Good. That sounds like it could have very easily been bad. Yeah. <laughs> it could have. Yes. But I'm glad it, it turned out well. It for turned you. out really well. Yeah. yeah. Sounds interesting. The next thing I read in June was The Puppet Masters by Robert A. Heinlein. This is one of those books that was on the list and on my sci-fi reading list, and uh-huh. I had it, and so I decided to read it, only to find it had fallen off the list. And so that was a little annoying, especially because this wasn't very good. Uh, uh, this was about uh, this was like a body snatchers invasion of the body snatchers story. Uh-huh. It's it's more of Heinlein's, you know. So the the big hero of the story are essentially local sheriffs, and you know they they come in and tell the, you know, the, the, you know, federal emergency managers and things like that, how to really handle situations. And oh, so, okay. uh, more of, uh, Heinlein's every man is the smartest man. And uh, yeah, so yeah. I gave that one two stars. I think, yeah, two stars because it was just very tropey and Heinlein style and it wasn't very good, you know. I feel like you are getting really jaded because you're reading nothing but, like, the best ever, and... I'm worried about that, too. Like, when I go to reading more stuff in general. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The next thing I listened to was Serafina uh, by Rachel Hartman, and this is also the beginning of a trilogy, but I will not be continuing on in this trilogy. Not because this book was bad, it's just that I thought it was a perfect standalone. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, there was plot that was going to continue over the next couple of books, but I didn't think it was particularly necessary for me. But this is a story where humans and dragons are trying to coexist, and tensions are high, and um, it's politically um, strained, I guess, Uh you know? And the main character is a half-breed, and um, she has to keep it a secret. Um, I thought the narrator did a great job. I'll leave the narrator's uh, name right here. I think that the the book was well-written. I just don't have any desire to continue. None of the story threads? No, 
didn't really grip hooked. me. You don't really, no. <laughs> don't really care where they go. But I gave it 4.25 stars. Yeah. So I like did enjoy said, it. A good standalone. Yeah. Next thing I read in June was Ender's Shadow by Orson Scott Card. This is the only book in the Shadow series that's on the sci-fi list. I understand why people say they like this better than Ender's Game, though I don't think you should read this book without reading Ender's Game. Nope. Um, but yeah, it was good. It was fun to follow Bean. It was good to get a different perspective um, on Ender, especially uh, on the commanders and just the different, the different angle that Bean saw. So I gave that one four stars, and I'm glad that uh, I ended my Orson Scott card reading with that, yeah. with that volume, that novel. Yeah. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I totally get what you mean. You won't understand everything if you haven't read Ender's Game. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the next thing I read was some Abigail Rue. Yay! Book number seven in the Cut and Run series, Touch and Go. Um, four stars. It was good. Um, the This one was a little bit different than the rest of them in that a lot of it was told in flashbacks, which oh. I actually really hated, but towards the end of the book understood why it was necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I kind of forgave the author for that, but for the first half of it, it was kind of rough to get into that style. It's got to be difficult for a book series that you like. Yeah, I think what the what happened was to continue going so so far ahead of mm -hmm. like because it's a nine book series. Yeah. So to keep going, the author decided to bring in characters that had not yet been talked about, but have a past with these other characters. Oh, okay. So yeah. she needed to to show why they all knew each other, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. How they're bonded. Yeah, and why yeah. they're so mad and trying to kill each other. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. there we go. All right. Next thing I read in June is City by Clifford D. Simak. I actually did this one on audiobook, and I went back and actually read some sections that I enjoyed. This is a series of short stories that take place in the same world, and they have reoccurring characters within them. You just get different perspectives on them, and it's very interesting because it's robots and animals, pretty much. There's very few humans in this story. So it's intelligent dogs and ants um, and just other animals that can speak to each other and can read now and, uh, you know, just uh, the change in society and how everyone thinks society should be after humans leave. Like, there's this robot that's trying to prevent humans from getting the thirst for war. Mm. And things like that. Um, yeah. Like, there's a part where one of the few remaining humans by chance makes a bow and arrow. And it's not very good. Uh, but the robot, you know, is struggling with what to do about it. You know, sure. whether to you know tell him never to do that again. Never, but you know the human and some of the animals that are watching him figure out that it it can kill, it can hurt, um, but then they run into a situation where they would have, they could have died if he didn't have it, and oh, so man. the robot's stuck in this you know <laughs> this quandary you know, or this you know yeah. yeah where where to take it, so that was very interesting. I gave it uh, four stars. The some stories are better than others. I didn't realize that was a short story collection, but that one yeah. is one that I do want to read eventually. So yeah. it's really interesting. No, it's very interesting and worth the read, definitely. The next thing I read was more Abigail Rue, and this is the first book in the spin-off trilogy, the Sidewinder series, and this is Shock and Awe. And this follows Nick and Kelly, and I apparently do not like them very much. <laughs> was not a fan of this. I gave it three stars. This is a really short one, um, I don't know, like a hundred pages or so. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, I don't understand how you can have insta-love when these characters have known each other for 15 years. They're soldiers. They Just have been... fought together, but all of a sudden one of them gets shot and it turns him gay, apparently. <laughs> Well, it was just bubbling under the surface the whole time. <laughs> I guess. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh my god, I love you. Bro, me too. So that happened. So now they're totally tight bros, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Good. Really. Good for them. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad it worked out for them. Yeah, it makes them it, happy. You got some more of those too, so. I know. It's a trilogy. Yeah. I'm really mad because so they weave into the last few books of the Cut mm-hmm. and Run series, but the last one in the Sidewinders comes after the last one in the Cut and Run series, so I have to end it on a Sidewinder. On the characters you don't like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, the next thing I read in June was Every Heart a Doorway, and this is by Seenan McGuire. Seenan? Seenan and McGuire. Uh, this was uh, Heidi's challenge to me for a month, two months. Anyway, I read it very quickly. It was good. I like the characters in it. Um, I usually prefer much more plot. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but. No, I like it. I'll probably pick up the sequel eventually if it, you know, floats back into our house. Yeah, no, um, she had it from the library and finished it, but I didn't think I was going to be able to finish it before the end of June, so. Yeah, but I gave that one... Oh, I gave it two stars, but, you know. <laughs> so, I, did forget about, was... I did forget about the fact that I like character-driven stories, you like plot-driven stories. I prefer yeah. a good mix of both, but, mm-hmm. yeah, I can take much more on the plot side and deal with flatter characters than some, I guess. And I can have just my favorite characters sitting around doing absolutely nothing but talking about their feelings for 500 pages. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next thing I read was The School for Good and Evil by Soman Shanani. I might have butchered that. Um... This is book one in a trilogy, and I don't understand how it is a trilogy. This was a 500-page book, middle grade. It's a story about um, two girls who are taken away to the school for good and the school for evil, but they get switched. The one who thinks she's going to be evil is in the school of good, and whatever. This was at least twice as long as it needed to be. It felt really repetitive. Um, They were both trying to get switched to the other school over and over and over and kept being presented with these situations where it was just proving that they were in the right school over and over and over. And it was, I listened to it on audiobook and it was a really long audiobook and I almost DNF'd it. It was so long. Um, I mean, the world was so much bigger than middle grade needed to be. Okay. Like, if you were going to have this much of a world and this much, these many characters, there were so many characters, it, you have to bump that up to at least YA. Mm-hmm. It's just, I don't know. It was rough for me. I gave it three stars, um, but I will not be continuing on in the trilogy. Yeah. The next thing I read is The Door into Summer by Robert A. Heinlein. This one is still on my sci-fi list, and I gave this one two stars as well because this is kind of the same story of just the libertarian everyman (laughs) defeating the, you know, the capitalist bureaucrats, you know, uh, you know, outsmarting them at their own game because, you know, the average man totally understands legal mechanisms way better than people that live and breathe them. Yeah. (laughs) And so, yeah, I'm definitely burnt out on Heinlein um and I have one more book to read of his Time Enough for Love and I know from Michael my best friend that it has a character in it that I absolutely hate from Uh, his world and so you're gonna put that one off for a while probably probably sucks yeah so two stars on that one okay the next thing I read Book eight in the Cut and Run series, uh, Ball and Chain. I love this one. I gave it five stars. Not only do we have Ty and Zane, who are my OTP for life, but also Nick and Kelly from the other series. <laughs> but I liked them better in this one because they were more established. It wasn't so insta lovey or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then also you get Ty's family, and the Grady clan are so... They're like backwoods, like almost white trash, like, they're, like, gun-toting crazy people, and they're hilarious. So when all the shenanigans are happening and people are dying left and right, Mm -hmm. everyone's scared and hiding, except for the Grady's, and they're just like, eh, whatevs. 
Like, I got my gun. I'm not I'm not getting murdered today. That's right. <laughs> I really enjoyed this one. Awesome. It sounds like fun. Yeah. Good. The next thing I read is Kill la Kill Volume 3, and this was just more for fun because this exactly follows the anime, and it's the last one in in uh, print form, but it's it's great. I love just the little bit of extra detail that they put into the images and everything, and then you, know, you always get uh, a few pages of color, you know, at the beginning oh. of them, so that's always nice. And five stars on that because I absolutely love Kill la Kill. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. The next thing I read is something that I I have not read anything like this for a while, and this is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro, and I listened to this on audiobook. This is a very quiet, slow, meandering story, <clears throat> excuse me, and I haven't read one of these in a long time. It was more of just a reflection on this person's life and just quietly questioning um, basically human rights and who has the right to basic freedoms and um, I don't know how much to say without spoiling it because there's a, I'm just gonna put spoilers. Spoilers! There are clones and so this is a lot to do with do clones have human rights? Okay, non-spoiler. There we go. Um, I didn't know how to rate this. I had to really mull it over for a long time because I found it a little bit slow and boring when I was listening to it. But as I mulled it over, I appreciated it more. Mm -hmm. um, and so I did eventually decide on like a 3.5 four-star rating. It is well-written, and I did like that it made me think. Um, yeah. But I guess I just wasn't expecting it to be that slow. Mm -hmm. I like those ones that get better as they marinate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next thing I read is I sort of participated in getting graphic um, in June. And that was on a weekend. Uh, let's see, it was some Saturday. But it was created by Kitty G and Elena, and they hosted it. I heard about it from Becky Bookworm. But anyway, I read a bunch of graphic novels and manga to participate, participate in that. So... I read Spider Island. This is part of Secret Wars. I really enjoyed this because the main character was actually um, Agent Venom, who is uh, Peter Parker's um, high school acquaintance, Flash Thompson, who was kind of his bully, becomes friend later in life, you know. Uh, but he gets the Venom suit, and he's pretty awesome in it. I gave that one... I gave that one five stars. That was a good story. Yeah. Nice. Um, I kind of participated in Getting Graphic Saturday, also, by reading one graphic novel. <laughs> and that was Saga Volume 7 by Brian K. Vaughn, and it's, it's just a solid series. I just, I really enjoy, um, all of the volumes. I gave it five stars, usually I go every other four star, five star, four star, five star. Um, and, I mean, I can't really talk about the plot, but I enjoyed it. And I recommend the series to everyone. This was for Getting Graphic also. This is March, uh, book one. This one is by John Lewis, uh, the representative. Uh, this focuses mostly on um, his childhood growing up and, you know, experiencing segregation, things like that, um, in, in different states, you know, within the South. And, and that was an interesting element of it. He goes on a road trip with his uncle, and, you know, they had to be very careful about you know, driving through specific states, and he had it very carefully mapped out. We can stop here. We can't stop here. We can, oh, you know, wow. and just things you don't yeah. think about and that are just duh when you do. And again, this um, the other part of this focused on the lunch counters, the Woolworth lunch counters, mm -hmm. and things like that. And when I was taught about this in school, they made it seem like it was a one day thing. Yeah, like you know, it was. And the thing it took like eight months of of people going in, sitting at these counters, being asked to leave humiliated, beat up, arrested, go to jail, then eventually get released, and then go back and do it again. And, and just the cycle of it, it took so long to, you know, put the public pressure on. And, yeah. and you know, and this this was done non-violently for that whole period of time. And I think that's a piece that's missing in at least American education about the civil rights movement is the amount of perseverance that it took, you know. 
um, that it's not just, you know, courage in one moment, one march, you know, things right. like that. It was, it was constantly sticking to these principles. And so, yeah. That's awesome. I've heard really good things about that series. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Yeah. And I think it's a great format to teach the subject matter in, too. The next thing I read was Killer Instinct by S.E. Green. And this was a really fast audiobook. I listened to it at uh, work, and I got through it in like one night. It was only about four hours long. It was a very fast and gripping thriller uh, story about a teenage girl who thinks she is going to be a serial killer. Yes. And then she gets contacted by a serial killer. It really reminded me of Dan Wells' I Am Not a Serial Killer. Oh, uh-huh. Um, except for Dan Wells has a bit of a supernatural um, streak to it where this does not. Um, I thought the ending was fairly predictable, but it it was okay. I, I really enjoyed that it kept me gripped mm -hmm. and hooked the whole time. There was definitely, what are those called, like red herrings or whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's tons of those, and they don't get wrapped up at the end or whatever, but it was enjoyable. And I gave it four stars. It was entertaining. Good. Next thing I read was Secret Wars Prelude. And so this was the main story arc. So this takes place with all sorts of different issues from different uh, runs of different heroes. And I'd read some of these individually on their own, uh, but it was good to you know, get it in order. I gave it four stars. Uh Okay, so Julie from Pages and Pens, I'll link her channel down below. Actually, I will try and link the review she did for this, but she recommended um, the series by Laura Kay called the Hard Ink series, I guess. And it's a uh, romantic suspense series, and she thought that I would like it because of Cut and Run. It's basically very similar in that it's these ex-military guys nice. <laughs> solving crimes and falling in love and awesome. stuff. Um, yeah, so I listened to the first one, which was Hard As It Gets, and I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it. Julie does a much better job of explaining it than I can, but I will attempt. I really liked the character depth and the fact that the like for a romance mm -hmm. usually it's they're very cheesy like flat characters yeah. but this is a group of a bunch of guys who can talk about their feelings and it doesn't feel forced or weird or whatever and they're not like giving each other crap for being all uh -huh. sensitive and whatever and oh you're falling for that girl or oh, you're such a pussy or whatever you know like there's none of that stuff <laughs> um I really enjoyed it, and I will continue the series. And the next thing I read was the main body arc of Secret Wars. Uh, again, I think I rated this, yeah, four stars overall. But anyway, just the main body and not the, not the prelude. The next thing I read was Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shauna McGuire. This is book number two in her... Trilogy companion novella series. I don't know what she's doing with that. Um, but I was very excited. The library bought it for me and I got to read it first. And I was torn. The first half of it, I was so excited to have it and I was so enjoying it. And then somewhere towards the middle, I got really disillusioned and just, it was very underwhelming at that point. Oh. And I'm I'm not sure exactly why, because it's not like the writing style changed, but it, I think maybe what it was is it was twice as long as Every Heart a Doorway, and so that was the point, that was the sweet spot where it should have been cut, uh -huh. and maybe that's why Every Heart a Doorway was so short, but um, I did enjoy the story, I really liked the characters Jack and Jill, and it was nice to see their world, their fairy world that they fell into. Mm -hmm. Um, I really enjoyed that part of it. I gave it three and a half stars. I think if it would have been the same length as Every Heart of Doorway, I would have given it a five star also. I read volumes four through twelve of One Piece. This is by Ichiro Oda. This is a very zany kind of pirate manga. And with people that if they eat this fruit, they get a superpower some kind, but then 
they can no longer swim, and if they're ever in the ocean, they lose their will to live. And so, what? so they're they're all very afraid of water. You know, yeah. pirates. <laughs> but they're are all pirates. Yeah, water. no, that mm -hmm. makes sense. So it's it's really zany and fun. I think nice. I'm into it so much because I've been reading some pretty heavy subject matter stuff. Yeah. So it's a good break in between. Awesome. I've been reading all of those four stars. They're pretty good. I finally finished The Raven Boys. This took me like three or four times starting it. I started it on audio and then decided I needed the physical and then I started the physical and I'm like, oh my god, now I need the audio. And I went back and forth trying to get through just the first like couple of chapters. Finally pushed through on the audiobook. I really enjoyed the narrator. Um, and I think what it is is this magic system in this book is so weird and I've never read anything like it and it was so difficult to accept this is mm -hmm. the universe that this is the world that they're living in um, because it feels very contemporary yeah except for this weird magic like almost like urban fantasy which is one of my least favorite genres mm -hmm. and that's probably why I didn't like this well I didn't I didn't like the first half of it. Once I finally got into it and got to know the characters, I fell in love with the characters. And I was able to push through the plot because of the characters. That being said, I am almost done with the second book and loving that one way more than this first one. So I would recommend pushing through this to get to the rest of the series. But I eventually gave it four stars. I absolutely love the characters, Gansey and Ronan, and they're just like, such different characters than I usually read. And, <laughs> and Noah. Oh, oh, Noah. Anyways, um, I'm very happy to finally have finished that. So push through. Go Booktube on. loves that, and I didn't understand it for a long time, but I'm glad I know now. The next thing I read is The Gods Themselves by Isaac Asimov. This cover is Heidi's favorite oh, of my it books. Oh, it has It has that weird CMYK, but like sort of overlaid there so you, you like it hurts yeah it hurts to look at it hurts uh, less with these this new prescription oh, i don't know if that does anything <laughs> anyway this was the last of the asimov books i had to read on my sci-fi list and i'm glad i ended on this one uh, this has to do with um, parallel universes and they figure out how to kind of transfer uh, needed materials or energy between them uh, but on one side, they figure out that their star is going to explode eventually if they keep doing this. And on the other side, they don't really care because it's, it's not going to affect them. And it's actually going to be good for them because it's, it's the energy that they need. So if the star explodes, hey, we'll just we'll be set for millennia after that. Oh you my know? Gosh. But, you know, there's people on each side that are like, we need to shut this down. We need to stop doing this. This is, not, you know, and then the powers yeah. that be are holding them back from that. Um, that comes to a solution eventually. But it just... Great parallel for climate change right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so wow. I gave that one four stars, and I'm glad, again, that I finished um, my yeah, Asimov reading on that one and not, like, The End of Eternity, which I really didn't like. That one sounds really interesting. Next thing was Cross and Crown, book two in the Sidewinder series by Abigail Rue, and I nearly DNF'd this one. I really had a hard time with this, this is book two in the trilogy. And I did finish it. I gave it three stars. I, it felt like it was trying to be cut and run, but with Nick and Kelly, uh -huh. and they're not high and Zane, so it doesn't work. That being said, they did bring back a character, uh, Julian Cross, from like a long time ago in the Cut and Run series, which I did not like him in the book that he was in in the Cut and Run series, but I liked him in this one better, so that kind of helped cool. even yeah. it out. But yeah, three stars. The last thing I read in June is Ilium by Dan Simmons. I thought I was going to actually DNF this one out of my sci-fi list because I tried a couple times to start this and I didn't like it. What this is is a sci-fi retelling of the Iliad and I was at a disadvantage reading this because I haven't read the Iliad yet and this obviously stuck very close to it because it talked about, well, on this day this happened to Aphrodite and, you know, Athena did this and, you know, all this 
So, so yeah. that was, I, I think I could have gotten more out of this story if I had already read the Iliad. I gave this... I don't know. I just closed my window. Anyway. So, <laughs> we can put it right here. <laughs> yeah. Put it right there. Anyway, uh, probably about three stars on this. It was long. And mm. so it's... And it was kind of hard to follow for a bit because the, the three different stories took a long time to come together. And uh, But I'm glad I, I'm glad I finished it because I, yeah. thought I, I thought I was actually going to DNF that one. And the last thing I finished is The Gilded Chain by Dave Duncan. This is book one in his King's Blades series, which is so full of nostalgia for me. I first read these when I was like a really young teenager, like old child, somewhere in there. And I've read them like four times maybe throughout my life. I love it. It's nothing special at all. It's just like swords and magic, just standard fantasy, but I just... It's just nostalgic. Good to lose yourself back in it again. Yes, and I'm Great. I'm definitely going to continue in my reread. I gave it four stars. Awesome. So that was our huge wrap up. Yeah. Thank you if you stuck all the way through it. Uh, give us some comments on anything you're reading or on what we're reading. Uh, give the video a like or subscribe to us if you're not. And take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.